Hey, this is DeAndre Hopkins, wide receiver for the Arizona Cardinals, and you're listening to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Ah, welcome in. Oh, no. Oh, Mike can't hear right now. Oh, that's right. But Why didn't we do it? Plan, it's football time. Oh, my goodness. We let Mike down, assuming Mike would come in. He is remote today and cannot actually even hear. I'm pretty sure right now he still can't hear us because of some weird technological problem we have. But in- it's coming. Oh, he's it's, back. It's coming. I can I can hear you're talking about me. What time is I it? Couldn't. What time is it, Mike? Oh, it's football time, baby. There it is. <laughs> Welcome into the show. Thursday, November nineteenth. It's football time. Yeah, that one's on you guys. That's on you. That's not me. Yeah, and uh, obviously, when you're doing a podcast, you it's one. You know, you get one shot. Mm-hmm. There's no editing. It's always live. And that's the best part. That's the best part. <laughs> so we're way too lazy to. <laughs> Do it over. <laughs> yes, yeah, that's right. Just go. Uh, we we have a busy show today. The forecast, a bunch of the matchups for week 11, starts of the week, boom, boom, kicker, news and notes to talk about, taking this show to 100. And the Thursday night game is just, I'm like counting down the minutes at this point. This is uh, one of the better matchups we've had in a long, long time. Are you excited, Mr. Moore? I am absolutely thrilled for this game tonight. I think it's going to be exciting. I, I am a little disappointed. Last I saw, there was a 60% chance of precipitation. Oh, no. Which I, I just want I want clear skies so that the ball can fly. You know what I mean? Like, just let <laughs> let them air it out. That's what they say. Let That's them what they say. air it out tonight. Oh, man. Well, do, you know. There, there are ways to uh, to stop that, isn't there? Some dances and things of that nature? Uh, there actually are, and... Look, if you are an owner of one of these franchises, which I don't doubt that we have one or 32 listening. At least half of them listen. Yeah, or at least someone in the organization. Is that our can core get the demographic? Yes, can get the information back. <laughs> Stop building open stadiums. Stop it. We have the technology to build domes and have good football every week. I know it's like, oh, it's cold. You don't know. It's, we're, so, we're so hardcore. Stop it. Just, I like that Jason's saying we have the technology, and the technology is a roof. That's right. That's <laughs> right. Well, here's the thing. We have the technology to make it to where the roof comes off. You can open the roof. Yeah, I mean, you don't have to have a permanent roof. It can be a temporary roof. Yeah, it's just one of those like, oh, man, it's 35-mile-an-hour wind and a ton of rain. Let's close the roof. Do they really build uh, the non-domes at this point, though? I mean, it went Aren't, yes. they, aren't they mostly Don't. retractable roof uh, stadiums at this point? I guess thinking through the, the last ones, we got Vegas was new, Los Angeles was new. Yeah, those were both uh, domed. Yeah, I good. think they're yeah. listening, Man, Jason. I, That's all I'm saying. I think they've heard you. They've seen your tweets. Yeah, they're not, they, they aren't cheap things to make. They, these the stadium roofs? <laughs> can, you, can you retrofit them? Can you, can you throw roofs onto old stadiums? That's a good or At question. least a, a real big blanket. <laughs> a tarp? Yeah, I don't know why they're not doing this. All right, you can find <laughs> us on uh, Twitter at the FF Ballers, the Fantasy Footballers dot com is the website. Let's uh, let's kick it off. Taking it up to one hundred. Presented by Head and Shoulders, available at Walmart. All right, uh, we are picking our week eleven, taking it up to one hundred players. And let me kick this off for us, because I know we're gonna we're gonna smash this week, three for three, yeah. three for three. I'm gonna 1, go thousand. Yeah, I'm gonna go with Mike Davis. It has been rough sledding for Mike Davis, but I think he gets he gets it back this week. D- Detroit, they uh, they cannot stop the run. The last four weeks, here's their fantasy finishes in terms of fantasy points given up to opposing running backs. Fourth most, second most, the most, and the fourth most. So, mm. uh, And they've been especially beat up in the passing game. That's something Mike Davis can do if Bridgewater gets back out there and they're trying to keep him safe, keep him protected. Best friend 
of Teddy Bridgewater is going to be the short passing game. It's going to be Mike Davis, Robbie Anderson. So I think Mike Davis takes it up to 100 this week. I, I, I really like that pick. When I was looking at my starts of the week, I – was Mike Davis was in consideration, but I saw you had him here, so I, I just let him live here. I'm going to go with a wide receiver who's been surprisingly good after you know a, a, a slow start to the year. Brandon Cooks after the retirement after the retirement ceremony, he's been very good. Obviously, had a bad week last week because not a dome um, and horrific weather in Cleveland. Uh, and you might look at the Patriots and say, "Well, this is this is not a good matchup." But the Patriots locked down. Your number one option. Have you and said the name yet? Over the, Brandon Cooks. <laughs> Brandon Cooks is my <laughs> that, taking that, it to 100 I just wanted player. to add to your arguments so they knew who you were talking about. Yeah, because I, the Patriots are known for taking out the number one option, and I believe that that is Will Fuller. And uh, In fact, over the last five weeks, as far as the wide receiver two for a team, they are really bad at giving up fantasy points to the wide receiver two. So I, I think Brandon Cooks has himself a game this week. Well, I like it because it's you acknowledging he's the two which makes me happy. And Brandon Cook's revenge game, right? Oh, yeah, I forgot. Oh. All right, Mike, what uh, odd taking it up to 100 pick do you have for us? <laughs> I'm going with the Miami DST, man. Like, you got to play a DST. This is part of fantasy football, so why not have one take it up to 100? Miami's taking on the Broncos, who have the lowest completion percentage in the league. They have thrown the most interceptions. The Dolphins are tied for the fourth most takeaways, and now... Maybe you don't even have Drew Locke on this team, and you got to go back to Brett Rippon. The Miami, uh, the Miami Dolphins defense about to take you over the top, take it to 100 this week. They'll be ripping that ball away. You know what I'm yes, saying? Yes, they will. Yeah, and every week Miami seems to have some sort of uh, spectacular defensive play, regardless of playing a bad quarterback. So uh, take your hair up to 100 with head and shoulders available at Walmart. Pick yours up today. Check out next Tuesday's episode to hear how these will up to 100 picks performed let's do some news news and notes from around the league so i think the biggest injury news of relevance right now because we're still getting practice reports and information heading into the weekend is tyler lockett what's the status of tyler lockett for the thursday night game uh are we expecting him out there uh, Pete Carroll expects him to play, and while he is an eternal optimist, I mean, it, I think we're so close to the game that if he's saying he expects him to play, there's no better information we have to go upon, so I expect him to play. Now, Adam and Schefter, on top of that, they've already admitted that Chris Carson is not likely to play. Yep, that's what I was going to say. Chris Carson, unlikely. Carlos Hyde is going to be active, and uh, so you can you can take your shot there. I'm not sure how the distribution will work, but he does not carry an injury designation as of right now, but he's missed, what, two straight weeks? Is that right? Yeah, it, at least two straight weeks. And and I, I believe that if you are in a pinch and you need someone uh, to start, you could throw Carlos Hyde in your lineup. I, I believe he'll be fine for I fantasy. I agree. Do you play Balaj Ahmed over Carlos Hyde? I would not. I would play Carlos Hyde, but you're taking – a risk in the sense that because he's coming back from a hamstring injury, the reaggravation or the uh, slowly getting him involved. But I, I think with so many fantasy points in this game, so many real points as a you know as a home favorite with a fifty-seven point over under, I, I want the opportunity for a large fantasy game. And the thing for if you're saying directly against Ahmed from the Miami Dolphins, Matt Burita practiced full uh practiced in full on Wednesday so you talk about you don't know how things are going to shake up Matt Burita might go right into that Miles Gaskin role and Ackman might not even touch the ball Joe Mixon Joe Mixon didn't practice on Wednesday this is um it's not good it's not good Th look they didn't put him on the IR because they did not believe it was going to be a three-week absence and something happened here. I, I, I think there has to have been either a, a, a re-aggravation or it's far more serious than they originally anticipated. Or they well, would you have can't put him say on far IR. more serious because they would have put him on the IR then too. So something might have happened, but they still haven't put him on IR. Yeah, I mean, well, that's what I'm saying. If I think it is far more serious than what they thought it was going to be because they would have put him there. So, um, yeah, it, it's, it's not good. And I, I worry about the, you know, the rest of this season, at what point are you going to get him back and be confident? If he came probably back, within the next three weeks. 
Oh, you're saying because he's, they're that not was putting my him point right is they're now. not put if if something you said far more serious. I was just saying it couldn't have been serious enough to um, put him on current because IR is just three weeks even if they did it now. So sure. I don't know. I mean, we know Geo's not the answer in that backfield. We know the offense has struggled without Joe Mixon, um, but no confidence right now, right? On putting yeah, on getting him back this week. Right? Correct. None. So Correct. right now, Joe Mixon, Chris Carson, you're just playing the waiting game with those guys. Carson, I think we all thought would be back before now, too. Yeah. I mean, it, it seemed like on his first week where he was his first missed game, it was he's got a good chance to play. And that was kind of surprising. But because of that, because of that news that they think he might be out there on week one, then week two, we're like, oh, he's oh, he's playing. Week yep. three, well, he's certain. This, this is an issue. Calvin Ridley, Kenny Galladay both practiced in a limited fashion. Uh, Galladay would be a nice boost for Matthew Stafford. Ridley, do we expect him to play right now? What's your feeling on Ridley? I'm a little hesitant. I am hesitant as well. I'm, I made the trade uh, uh, for him during the bye week for the Atlanta Falcons based off of what I was reading from beat reporters, people saying that the the one game absence plus the the bye week should be enough to get Calvin Ridley back out there, but he's got a foot sprain. He's got the same problem that Joe Mixon has, where we figured Joe Mixon was going to be back because that's the information they were giving us. So I, I'm with you right now, Andy. That I I'm I'm preparing for him to not be active, but if he is active, then he will be in my lineup. All right, more updates on Alan Lazard. Uh, Matt LaFleur came out and said, we're certainly going to have to ease him back into the lineup. Hopeful to have him back on Sunday, but we'll see how his body reacts. He is not actually active for Sunday yet. So is Correct. It, MVS is looking more interesting as a flyer. Well, well, now that you said now that you said that, he's not. Like the, the rule of the, the fantasy so football show is, situation? Is, is that the, is we is that cannot, the V? Yes. Oh no. Yes. We cannot talk about Marquez Voldemort. Scantling <laughs> without <laughs> without uh, corrupting the entire weekend. That we've talked about him now, so you can't play. Yeah, uh, that does seem to be the case. And then Noah Fant didn't practice on Wednesday. Monitor that. Christian McCaffrey not expected to play Sunday. Panthers listed him as out, but then updated his game status to not expected to play minutes later. <laughs> That's Was that? That Matt was, Nagy giving him a call saying, "No, no, 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 no." We don't. We I know we've already designated him as out for the week, but that means I'm not expecting him to play. Yeah, right? but, but if you say not bench. expected to play, then the defense are they preparing? For oh it? man, they totally think they're going to see CMC this week. <laughs> okay, uh, yeah, he's not going to play. Reminder: Take your Thursday night players out of the flex position. It's important. Uh, before we get into the fantasy forecast, Jason. Yes. Uh, I'm look, about to win some championships. What do I do? Well, I don't know the leagues that we're not playing together in, uh, but <laughs> you know, I'm sure you have some leagues without me that you'll win some championships in, and now is the time to start scoping your stuff at fantasychamps.com. You've got the bling rings. Oh, I'm scoping. You've got the tall trophies. You've uh, literally all the best stuff for winners, for losers. Look, you you got to shame whoever comes in in last place. They've got loser trophies. Have you picked out which one you want yet? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Last place. The insults for champ champ over I here. I know. I'm going for my third championship in a row in our dynasty league. Y'all can eat it. And you want to know where I'm going to go? I'm going to go to fantasychamps.com, and maybe I'll get a championship belt. I don't have a championship belt yet. I gotta, I'm got i going to get a ring. I'm going to get a belt. I'm going to get a trophy. You could do the same thing. Go to fantasychamps.com. Use the code BALLERS. You get 10% off your order. Uh, order away. Yeah, and uh, another reminder, jointhefoot.com. That's our fantasy football community. Extra episodes, premium perks. Uh, this is the kind of insider area for uh, everybody listening to this show. So you can check that out at jointhefoot.com. Fantasy Forecast. You guys ready? Week 11. Oh, we're in week 11. Oof. Hoofta. Did we talk look about the fact that... Yeah, look at us. Look, look at, at us. us. <laughs> who, thought, who thought we'd be here? Uh, Not me. Did we talk about the fact that 
The NFL has put all teams into the advanced COVID protocols. Did we bring that up the, on the uh, show? The intensive, yeah. yeah we, the intensive. we hadn't mentioned it on the show, but the, the NFL is now going proactive with the situation that's going around the country with the numbers going up. So it, good to see them trying to get out in front of it. Yeah, we've we've had to put in some intensive protocols here from time to time as well. So as Mike that's waves me. waves from home. <laughs> All right, the week 11 buys, the Bills, Bears, Giants, 49ers. Let's kick this thing off. The Philadelphia Eagles at 3-5 and 1 taking on the Cleveland Browns who are 6 and 3. Yeah. Look at that. Look at us. <laughs> they they're good. The pro the problem is their losses were so drastic and such beatdowns that we don't look at them as good as what they are. Or they can't play up to the competition and aren't a real threat. Why not both? Why not both? Browns are three-point favorites, so they're getting respect from uh, Las Vegas there. 47 point over under. I don't know. Against the Eagles? Yeah, that's not. <laughs> at home? That's, that's probably disrespect, respectful. right? <laughs> well, I, the Eagles are a weird team, too, because you just don't know what they represent as an opponent. I Look, I know that they're not a great football team. But then you've had these games where they show up and they press uh, they press Pittsburgh, right? And they've they've had opportunities to compete. And I, I'm not going to pick them to upset the Browns here necessarily, but I think it'll be a competitive game. We saw Nick Chubb get back into the lineup. Nick Chubb is incredible. He breaks yes. off a 15 plus yard run every 10.5 rushes right now, <laughs> which is the highest That's rate absurd. in the NFL. And he's the only person that can make you know turning to Kareem Hunt look like a bad decision on certain plays because he's just so explosive. Philadelphia is allowing the seventh most rushing yards per game. We know the game plan for Cleveland is to run the football. So Hunt, Chubb, 100% this week, right? Yes. Uh, and every week. Uh, every single week you're putting both of them in. Uh, I know people might be scared of, oh, Chubb is back. Now Hunt's going to have his volume go down. That didn't happen. That's Over 100 going, yards last week. It's not going to happen. Uh, the, they they are a true one-two punch that is just m even more brutal on a defense than what a lot of teams talk about. Oh, we're going to have a one-two punch. This is this is unfair. And then uh, turning to the other side at the running back position, Miles Sanders, you're going to play him every week. It's his backfield. Last week mm -hmm. was unfortunate, right? Boston Scott ends oh. up with a long touchdown. Corey Clement gets the one carry he gets every three weeks, happens to take it into the end zone. But Miles Sanders' confidence rest of season, if he's out there, you're very excited about him, right? Yeah, it's a 10 out of 10. Uh, the, you know, uh, Barring injury, which you've got to throw that in there considering how banged up he's been, uh, every week he should be a great option moving forward. What about the quarterbacks in this game? Are you avoiding both of them? I am avoiding both of them. Um, Baker Mayfield, I want to keep my eyes on because I still want to see him play in a game without Odell Beckham with not horrendous weather. <laughs> you know, it's like since he's lost him, all of his home games have been <laughs> atrocious. So I'm watching him, but I'm not going to play him. On the other side, Carson Wentz is a guy who he puts up fantasy points from time to time, but at the same time, he his floor is so low that he can really hurt you. I don't feel like he's – the risk-reward is not worth it to me to have an upside game where it's like, okay, he's the quarterback seven. I don't think he's going to no. be you know the quarterback three or above on any given week. And the floor is, oh, he's the quarterback 30 because he got sacked a bunch and held onto the ball and fumbled and threw picks. The Browns are only giving up 16 fantasy points per game right now to opposing fantasy quarterbacks as well. They control the clock. They have their identity. I'm with you. I would avoid both of these guys. And I would avoid Jarvis yeah. Landry. I would res avoid Rashard Higgins. These are not players that you can count on right now. Yeah, and you, both of these teams have good defensive lines, good pass rushes. Wentz is 32nd in completion percentage under pressure. Baker's 33rd in completion percentage under pressure. So, yeah, I think this is a, a, a game where you focus on the, the, the running game. Now, I Well, the, the nice part for Carson Wentz, at least, is that the, the Cleveland defense, they while they're stout and they're good, the, the way they get it done is not through pressure, uh, it, a pressure on the, the opposing quarterback. So I would say I, I generally agree with you guys, but this is one of those games where it, this won't this one will not surprise me if Carson Wentz ends up in the top 12. Travis Fulgham, Jalen Rager, decisions at wide receiver for the Eagles. I think a lot of people are very gun-shy with Fulgham after the disappointing five targets, one for eight. 
You said I'm don't back be. In. You're back in this week? Yeah, I'm back in with Travis Fulgham. The, Interesting. The dude, you're you're uh, very I bullish on Wentz in this uh, passing game then. Well, I, I'm bullish on Travis Fulgham. I'm, I'm saying I won't, I'm not playing Carson Wentz if I can help it. I'm just saying it won't surprise me in this particular matchup if he does well. I mean, up until this past week against the Giants where – the Giants can shut people down every once in a while. We were hopeful, again, this is just reiterating, that Fulgham and the Eagles took on the Giants a couple weeks ago, and he was able to come through with 5 for 73. Now, if you before this, this last game against the Giants, which was on the road, Fulgham was on four straight games of 70-plus yards. He's a good wide receiver. He's the number one wide receiver, despite the Rager is back, despite that Dallas Goddard is back. Alshon Jeffrey is you know he he saw a target this past week but Rager is a good player and I would not be hesitant to get him back out there uh, as, I think my wide, you, as a wide receiver too I think Did you that mean was a Fulgham there All right yeah yeah I'm sorry yes Fulgham I think that was a Freudian slip because Rager is a good wide receiver and he is the my hesitation for Fulgham uh, both of them were on the field 88% of snaps this last game Rager out targeted him and it just it, it gives me pause to say I'm not sure who I, I you know I, I want both of these guys on my roster, but I feel like we need more information to know who's going to have the. Would better you game. play uh, Marvin Jones this week, or would you play Travis Fulcom? I would play Marvin Jones. He's been super hot. Mike, I would go Marvin Jones there. All right, and then Dallas Goddard, Austin Hooper are both of these top twelve options this week. <laughs> yes, <laughs> I laugh. <laughs> yes, they are top twelve options because. Tight ends are so, so bad. Uh, Dallas Goddard has been very disappointing. You wanted a, a monster uh, breakout when Zach Ertz was gone. He got hurt. He came back, was disappointing his first game back, but he's been out there. He's been running routes. He's getting targets, and I, I still think you can start him. We'll, we'll actually talk about him later. Will we? Oh, yes. We might. The Atlanta Falcons at 3-6, and six, taking on the New Orleans Saints at 7-2. and two. Saints are five-point favorites. It's a 50-and-a-half point over-under in this one. And, uh, you know, these two teams, year after year, you tend to get some surprising games. I don't know what to do here, but I think I'll do this. Andy's Almost Upset of the Week. What do you think? What's your take? I think Jameis Winston knows how to lose games. So Atlanta's been playing so much better of late. And, uh, you know, Matt Ryan will have Julio Jones in this game. I think it will be a very fun one. Now, will it be fun for fantasy players? It's a 50 and a half point over under. And the entire outside of Alvin Kamara on the Saints side, you do have this murkiness to. What are we going to get out of Jameis Winston? I know they haven't announced a starting quarterback. I think we all know it. it's going to be Jameis Winston. <laughs> and, you know, do you have a read on on what they're going to do with Taysom Hill? Are they going to utilize him? I know he was a he's a high-ceiling waiver pickup at the tight end position because if they choose to give him more opportunities, you know he's going to be good for, you know, some some touchdown potential. They they use him with Breeze, but Will they use him this week? Yeah, I mean, it's one of those things you pointed out accurately that last year when Teddy came in, they they stopped using Taysom Hill. Uh, th he's the backup. Y you know, if he gets injured, mm -hmm. now there is no backup quarterback. So uh, I, I we don't know what's going to happen, but if I have to project game one with Jameis, I think Jameis is a good enough quarterback with these weapons, with Jared Cook and Emmanuel Sanders and Michael Thomas to to be able to run an offense. But their defense has been great since their bye. They've gotten back to the elite defense they were the last couple of years. And if I'm Sean Payton, I'm saying, I'm going to make this more of a defensive game, run the ball, safe passes, short game. Alvin Kamara. Alvin Kamara, short passes to Michael Thomas. I'm going to focus on that and try to try to keep the, the turnovers away from Jameis. That's how the Saints win this game. And so I think you could be a little bit disappointed in Jameis as far as a, a massive ceiling. I am not worried at all about Michael Thomas. I'm not worried at all about Alvin Kamara. And Jared what? Cook, he's a tight end that uh, obviously you could start. Yeah, Mike, you feel pretty good about Cook this week? Yeah, well, the, the matchup is there, and Jameis has, has gone to the tight end position before. I wanted to, to just quickly touch on uh, for Taysom Hill. I agree 
with Andy. The the way I'm projecting it is your starting quarterback has five fractured rim ribs, had a uh, punctured lung, and y- you can't mess around with your backup quarterback putting him in, in the, on these packages. When he's your third string quarterback, sure, that's not a problem. So I am projecting that we will see less less Taysom Hill than we have. But it's fantasy football, so you have to leave room for the the opportunity, the, the, the possibility that you're projecting it wrong. And people want to know where would I slot Taysom Hill, or what they want to know, where, where we would slot Taysom Hill in as a tight end option. I would say Kelsey, Waller, Hawkinson, Andrews, and Gronk are, I'm playing them ahead of Taysom Hill. But those five guys, like, if you want to, after that, if you want to take the shot on Taysom Hill, if you're on the ESPN platform and put Taysom Hill in your tight end, I'm okay taking that shot after those five guys. Yeah, I think that's about where I'd have him too. And the truth is, is I'd love to see some uh, some sort of sign, something from a beat writer, something from the head coach over the back part of this week to give me more confidence heading into Sunday. Something about him being <laughs> They part- haven't announced the starting quarterback. I, I don't think we're getting news on, on gadget plays. Well, we're we're going to know. I, I, I think we're going to know who the starting quarterback is, obviously, before game time. It, it will be announced at some point. Even if it's an hour before kickoff, they they'll they'll watch warm ups and see what's going on. If T- if Taysom Hill is not the quarterback, then I I personally am far lower on him at tight end. I I probably wouldn't play him. You'd prefer couple, I prefer couple a, catches from, from yeah, somebody Jared, else. Jared Cook, <laughs> Dallas Goddard. A, I'd prefer a tight end. It's not enticing to you the idea of getting a a, a big game at a tight end if you have to go out there and throw like Higby or. I don't think I think the injury only hurts doesn't help unless he becomes the quarterback. You, I, we could have done this all year long. We could have thrown uh, Taysom Hill into our tight end spot last week or the week before, or the week before, and it's worked. Two or my recollection, I think three. I think one early and then two recent games. He's been good, but outside of that, it's you, you look at his game logs. It's zero fantasy points. It's negative fantasy points. It's one fantasy point. Yeah, you're certainly not banking. You're basing any of your decisions this week based on historical. Taysom Hill you're basing it on last Upside. year they definitively knew that Bridgewater was the backup quarterback here's the thing about um, if Taysom Hill if they decide that something's going sour with Jameis Winston they can put him on the bench and suddenly you have a backup quarterback that's fair that's that's how that's how the difference would be made if if the second half of the game Taysom Hill is is the starting quarterback because of three interceptions um, yeah it's you, ri- I mean it's all it's very risky I mean, it's completely yes. uh, a huge risk and a gamble and uh, but if I was if I was facing somebody that was favored to beat me by a lot of points, I am going to put Taysom Hill in as my tight end and hope for a passing touchdown or something of that nature, as opposed to a low ceiling tight end. Todd Gurley has the most red zone carries in football, <laughs> and he's been good with them. He's been good with them. Uh, uh. He is tough to watch between the twenties. <laughs> But he finds a way to produce. But will he this week against the Saints defense, who over the last six weeks and over the course of the whole year are the number one defense against opposing fantasy running backs? No, I, I, I don't think it's going to be a great week for him. Um, if you look at his pace, he's been great. I mean, every week he's just been a solid, reliable RB2 or better option. Um, and so... But but when you look at how it comes, it's all in the in the touchdowns. He's on a 16 game pace since week three of 18 rushing touchdowns, um, a thousand rushing yards. So there is a baseline there. I think this is a a player you you are playing, but you have to expect that he doesn't get the touchdown this week. Todd Gurley is on a month straight, so four games of averaging under three yards a carry. <laughs> I mean that's. That is, it's so gross. Right, but during that time, 20 attempts, 23 attempts, 18 and 19. Oh, yeah. I'm playing Todd Gurley despite the tough matchup because it's, if you watch Todd Gurley, I mean, basically since week two, you have known, okay, I'm putting Todd Gurley out there and I hope that he falls into the end zone, which he has been doing at a very rapid rate. If Calvin Ridley misses this game, Julio Jones should see his target share increase even more. And and Hayden Hurst. You know, in week nine without Ridley, seven for 62 on eight targets, your confidence level can rise on Hayden Hurst if Ridley sits in this game. 
And, uh, you know, New Orleans, they give up some points to the tight end position. So something to pay attention to. Yeah. And, uh, and like I said, the, if Calvin Ridley is out there, which you better be prepared for him to not be out there over the past six weeks, the saints defense has been very generous for fantasy wide receivers. So I would play him. Yeah, I would just, I, I would take the risk and play him. Cincinnati yeah. Bengals, two, six and one. Washington football team, two and seven. Who's ready for this one? Oh, baby. Offensive outpouring. 46 and a half point over under is just an average mediocre game. Yeah, Washington, though. One and a half point favorites. I brought it up yesterday. Alex Smith is the leader in passing yards over the last two weeks. So he's been able to do that. He's not been able to get the ball into the end zone. I think he only has one touchdown in that span. But uh, 55 pass attempts last week. And this is the J.D. McKissick, Terry McLaurin extravaganza? Yes. Uh, <laughs> I, 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 would, I would add Antonio Gibson to that as well. Um, Gibson, McKissick, and Terry McLaurin can be started every single week. And, uh, you know, this is a great matchup for them. So I, I would say if you're rostering these guys, you're, you're super excited. This is the time to capitalize on multiple touchdowns on a, on an easy defense. Um, but Terry McLaurin specifically, uh, he's primed in this matchup because the, the Bengals have been surprisingly good against running backs. Um, if you look back at their game logs and you see, okay, they're, they're top half in the league against running backs, but they've been playing some really good running teams. And they've impressed me, uh, which is surprising. So I do think Terry McLaurin and J.D. McKissick specifically are better options because of the passing game. To speak to your point, it, on the year, they're 15th against the running back position, but over the last six weeks, they've jumped up to 11. That's one of the things that you can, if you use the Stream Finder tool on the website, you can see how teams are performing in recent uh, you know, spans of time, not just the whole season, which is pretty important. Like, you know, Jason, you brought up in the previous – uh, matchup the fact that you know before the bye week New Orleans was giving up the fourth most points to quarterbacks they were not a good defense in that regard now they're at the ninth fewest since the bye so teams change over the course of the year they kind of find their groove sometimes it's matchups that distort the stats something to pay attention to and the Bengals have been good against running backs uh, hopefully we continue to see Antonio Gibson get more and more opportunities in the offense because yes, of how please. explosive he is I think we will we we talked about it on a show earlier this week, the fact that they are wanting to give him more, but they're, they're worried about the mental aspect of the game, which means getting him more and more involved in the passing game as time goes along. Um, and he's, he's built to be able to take that workload. Uh, this has been marked as Al Borland's between the trenches mismatch of the week, which uh, is, We're back to this. is to say that Washington has the, their second in adjusted sack rate Burrow's been pressured on the fifth most dropbacks in the league, so uh, run for your life, young man. Yeah, the the Washington DST is in play, and uh, along with the pass catching weapons you guys talked about, Logan Thomas is, is in play for me here. Alex Smith is a, the best quarterback that this team has seen all year, and he runs he runs a ton of, ton of routes. Meanwhile, the the Bengals defense are in the last six weeks ranked last against fancy tight ends. That's yeah. not very good, Mike. That's thirty second no. best. Yeah. Oh well, when you say it like that, yeah, they're this pretty good. Sounds no, I, bad I, either I, way. I agree with you. I think Logan Thomas, he was almost my start of the week at tight end, and he's an absolutely fine play. If you're yep. one of those many teams scratching and clawing at tight end, look for Logan Thomas, who is still on some waivers. Yeah, and if you, uh, you know, if Mixon's out, which it's not looking good, Geo's going to be back out there. He's going to be a spot start for you top 24 type of play. Washington just gave up 149 total yards to DeAndre Swift, so there is some opportunity there. Gio's been hot and cold in, uh, you know. He has to score. Yeah, he does. And then Tyler Boyd, T. Higgins, it's de it's between those two on a weekly basis. Higgins has been on fire. I mean, Justin Jefferson, I've given him a lot of praise. Higgins deserves the same amount. I mean, he's been putting up consistent mm -hmm. high yardage games, seems to be a go-to target for Joe Burrow. Is he the start over Tyler Boyd to you, or would you still stick with Boyd? 
I think I want the upside of Higgins, uh, the the deeper routes, the the chance at a deep ball. This is actually a really weird, bizarre, shockingly bad matchup for wide receivers. I I, I haven't been able to wrap my head around it, but as the weeks go They're on, a good defense man, they are a good defense. But specifically, they just they've been locking out all wide receiver options. Now the last three weeks. They've completely shut them down, but it was the the Giants twice and Dallas with a backup. So maybe they're a little skewed, uh, but that's where I want I want the big play shot because uh, over the over the the dink and dunk Tyler Boyd. All right, let's talk about the Detroit Lions four and five traveling to Carolina, taking on the Panthers, who are now three and seven. So uh, they've been uh, struggling in recent weeks. Panthers. One and a half point favorites in this one, 45 and a half point over under. So that's not uh, anything special there. Matthew Stafford, uh, you know, I, I mentioned Galladay, limited in practice. We don't know if he'll be back. Marvin Jones, the last couple weeks has been good. Eight for 96 and a touchdown last week. And if Galladay's out, he's in your lineup. What if Galladay's back? Are you are you moving mm -hmm. on from Marvin Jones? Yes. Uh, yeah, I, I probably would. We, I, we had a start sit question earlier with Marvin Jones and I guess we should have prefaced that with Marvin Jones was the answer assuming that Kenny Galladay is out yeah we saw Marvin Hall with the touchdown oh, it was, it was last Fulgham, week I think yep it was it was Stafford has been pretty darn good recently I know the thumb injury has some people concerned I'm not one of them are you guys uh, overly concerned with this injury I mean it's a good matchup against Carolina and there's some opportunity here I am a little worried. If Galladay doesn't play, then uh, you know the low over under and the hurt throwing hand. I would be a little bit more concerned personally. I, I would look for a different option. But you're right; the matchup isn't bad, and he has been playing phenomenally. And part of his, uh, you know, ability to do that is what we've seen from DeAndre Swift. DeAndre Swift's a great pass catcher. So it's it's kind of like you know Drew Brees padding his stats with Alvin Kamara. It doesn't take a great thumb to check the ball down to a running back who can get you a ton of yards after the catch, and those would go to Stafford. Makes makes a huge difference. It reminds me of when Riddick was at the top of his game and he was just another weapon out of the backfield for Stafford. DeAndre's My concern with, for Stafford here is on the other side of the ball for the Carolina Panthers. If it's I mean, Either way, you have if Teddy Bridgewater can play, he has a hobbled Teddy Bridgewater who has, I, I believe it was an MCL uh, injury, or maybe it might be PJ Walker. I know he was a, you know, like that XFL Darling. stud, but this the NFL is not the, not the XFL. You can't say for sure that PJ Walker could can get it done. He might surprise everybody and, and and be excellent in this matchup. But like, if it's if it's a backup quarterback, the Lions might get up huge, and then it turns into Stafford has. 200 something passing yards and no touchdowns that would be my only concern i i hear you and uh, at least right now vegas has the panthers favored in this game and i think most of us are expecting bridgewater to be back out there this week like mike davis like deandre swift a lot we'll talk about swift and stafford later i i'm pretty bullish on stafford this week dj moore robbie anderson curtis samuel it's kind of become a swirling mix of upside and pain among those yes. three. Yep. Uh, Robinson or Robbie Anderson, he's targeted frequently, but listen, he has not been inside the top 30 wide receivers in over a month. So even though he's frequently targeted, there haven't been big plays and touchdowns. DJ Moore has had some monster games and some disappearing acts. And then Curtis Samuel was on fire until last week when he completely disappeared. How do you possibly wade through these three? Yeah, it, it, whoever you have, you start. Right. I mean, that's <laughs> basically that. That probably is the advice. I think all three are startable options. They've been pretty good on the course of the season. Both Robbie Anderson, DJ Moore are top fifteen wide receivers, but they don't usually come in the same game. Sometimes they do. Week two, week five, they did. But for the most part, they're you know, if one has a good game, it comes at the expense of the other. But you know, the fact that they're both top fifteen on the course of the season says you need to put them in your lineup because they both have big play ability you can make the argument for Robbie Anderson because of targets you can make the argument for DJ Moore because of athleticism and I think and he's got a good matchup he's got a good DB matchup this week against Desmond Trufant yeah so I I would I think I would start um those it, whatever wide receiver I have 
um, I would start them. Curtis Samuel will be the third option to me. TJ Hawkinson's always in your lineup at the tight end position. Ian Thomas is uh, not somebody Never. to acknowledge uh, in terms of fantasy existence. Pan uh, the Pittsburgh Steelers, 9-0, and taking on the Jacksonville Jaguars, mm. who are sitting at 1-8. and Remember they won that first game of the year? Uh, and they were yes. shocking. It was the Colts, right? It was a nice game. I think it was. I mean, it Singular. was. Singular. Yes, it was a nice game. They got off to a hot start and haven't won since. Yes, yes it was. Against it was the Colts, and it was a, it was a shocking upset. Well, yeah, yeah, and then, and then now we're here. Started from the top. <laughs> so can they take off? Uh, uh, can they take on the undefeated Pittsburgh Steelers and give them their first loss of the season? Nope, they cannot. Okay. Uh, Jake Luton is uh, probably preparing himself for. I mean, I'd be I'd be doing the whole like you're a kid and you you take all the pillows off the couch and you tape them on your body. I mean, that's the <laughs> the Jake Luton move I'm doing this week. Uh, I mean, he's he's had his moments, but he's going to have some more, and he's not going to want to remember them this week. Pittsburgh is just such a ferocious defense. T.J. Watt and company will be coming fierce at Jake Luton. So ew, what do you do with the options in Jacksonville? I think you play James Robinson because you always do. And um, Honestly, I, I was going to make James Robinson my start of the week because it was a bad matchup, and maybe people wouldn't know. But I thought, you can't. I mean, he's a top five running back. He's been a... He's been unbelievable in all matchups. You you absolutely have to start James Robinson. That's a no-brainer. There's no chance I would not start him, and the matchup he's, is irrelevant. He's actually be been the like reverse rookie wall situation where he's somehow, despite quarterbacks and the record, he's gotten stronger as the year has gone on, 119 rushing yards three weeks ago, then 99, then 109. I think he's just really good. <laughs> and and the team has to use him as their sole offense, and so he breaks off enough plays to be relevant. DJ Chark, though. Yeah, that's well, – And uh, I th Chris Thompson is hurt again, right? Yes. Yeah, no, it's uh, James Robinson. Yeah, is Chris Thompson's on, yeah, Chris Thompson is on the IR. And, the, and when we saw uh, – when Chris Thompson missed some action earlier on, that's when you saw James Robinson's targets go way up. So not, not that Chris Thompson was really involved, but – he is a good pass catcher, and you put him on the field in those scenarios. But now that all that work goes to James Robinson. Yeah, they, the current roster is James Robinson, dot, 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 Dare, Agumbawale, and Oze yeah. Ozigbo. So Robinson's going to get all the work. You are playing DJ Chark, Jason? I am playing DJ Chark. I, I know that the matchup isn't the best with this pass rush and a great defense from the Pittsburgh Steelers. But DJ Chark has established himself, and what I love is two weeks ago you had that deep ball from Jake Luton. We, we, we weren't sure what we were going to get in Jake Luton at all. We heard that he could throw a great deep ball, and then he hit Chark on that big play. Well, you, you don't predict that. The next week, though, I loved the fact that we saw it again. Now, it was a super windy game in Green Bay, so they did not connect, but they are going to take their shot, and if I get a shot or two of a of a deep ball from someone who could throw a nice deep ball to DJ Chark, who's got four three speed and his frame. I I think you you know that's where you you have a big fantasy game and you know he's been up there on the target counts. So I I think uh, I'm okay starting DJ Chark even in this minus matchup. I don't think he's gonna have time to to sit back there and take a deep shot. So I think I'm out on Chark this week. I'm concerned. That bit, I mean, I just have a different opinion sure. than you do. Mike, Do you? how do you weigh in on Chark? Are you playing him as a wide receiver, I would, too? I would play him. Yeah, I would play him as a wide receiver, too. Uh, Pittsburgh is a dominant defense, but where they are beat is at the wide receiver position, allowed the ninth most 20-plus yard pass plays. Yeah, that, I mean, like that's what's so... They're 20th against fantasy wide receivers. It's a, it's a shocking thing when you see it sandwiched in there with Fulgham Pittsburgh had his fourth big game against, against them. Yeah, it's what's that? Fulgham had his monster game. Yeah, against yeah, them. yeah. It, it's one of those really weird things because the pass rush is so good. You'd think they don't have the time, but where they've been beaten this year are on the big deep balls. It's, I, I guess it's because they're so good down short that the only time you can do anything as an offense is to take a shot. And they well, they end up in a lot of situations of of, of playing more preventative back end defense too because they've had leads and they've had to waste the clock. I mean, they're nine and zero. Big Ben, yep. James Conner, yeah. you have to. Juju, Deontay, yep. Claypool, yep, yep, yep. Ebron, yeah. I mean, that's every player. 
<laughs> it's all Steelers. Yeah, I mean the the yeah, the there's biggest, not much to talk about there. No, the biggest question mark is going to be James Conner, whether or not um, he's going to be good. He hasn't been good in a, in a couple of weeks, but I I still think you have to start him. All right, uh, let's move forward. The Tennessee Titans at six and three, taking on the Baltimore Ravens, who are six and three now. Ravens are six and a half point favorites in this one, forty nine point over under. I don't know how to feel about Baltimore any given week because you are just waiting to see something from last year. At least in this a, is the week. At least a game or two. This is the week. This, Mike? this is the week. This is the yeah. Week. This is the week. This the, the the Tennessee defense is not what they had hoped for, and this is the week, man. I I like Lamar Jackson a lot in this matchup. Unfortunately, the the running backs. Good luck. I mean that that's that's a <laughs> that's a hero start if I've ever seen one. I'm not playing any of the running backs if I can help it, but uh, I I I do feel very confident in Lamar and uh, Mark Andrews this week. The running backs, we have them all outside the top 30 in our consensus rankings this week. Dobbins, we have ranked highest, just the upside, the hope for a big play. But, yeah, we talked about them earlier in the week. It's too hard to predict. Hollywood, you know, you, you said all that about Tennessee. Is there enough there for you to take your shot on Hollywood? Because I'm I'm open to it. The, the problem is just like the running backs, I don't, you can't feel confident which wide receiver it's going to be. Willie Sneed was the one who came through last week, and it's you know it's it's fun to see Willie Sneed back. It, and the the thing about Sneed is he is a he's a good wide receiver. He just he is part of this Baltimore Ravens offense where there's not much going around for the for the passing attack, especially when Lamar Jackson is so focused on Mark Andrews, and and rightfully so. Mark Mark Andrews deserves targets, but. It's the confidence for me is the Ravens are going to score a bunch of points. And unfortunately, Lamar and Mark Andrews are the only ones that I'm going to start if I can help. I, it. I agree. I think Hollywood is one of those big upside cheap players in DFS that you can take a shot on, say, call your shot. This is the game versus I mean, in, in, a, in a normal redraft league, I'm not sure that you're even rostering him enough to play. Now, if you if if he's on your waivers and you're struggling with a matchup, you can say, okay, look at the guys on waivers. Who has the chance at a big game? Well, Hollywood does. So then you could yeah. you could pick him up and put him in. But I don't think he's a reliable option at all. We at least saw him go off Hollywood. That is against Tennessee last year in the playoffs. You know, seven and over a hundred yards. Is that back when Lamar could pass the football? Yeah. Uh, look, I I was encouraged last week. I know it was crazy rainy for the uh, the that Patriots Baltimore game, but Lamar looked better. He looked more focused to me during that match. He threw for two hundred and forty nine yards. I mean, outstanding. <laughs> that is <great>. unbelievable, <laughs> Lamar. What are you, Joe Montana? <laughs> In the pouring rain, though, man. What did Cam Newton pass for? Oh uh, yeah, he needs the rain to be accurate. <laughs> Tannehill, uh, not a great matchup on the no. road against Baltimore. Probably find somebody else. We have met 19 on the week. Derrick Henry, every week you play him. A.J. Mm -hmm. Brown, the same. You are looking for big plays from A.J. Brown, and he delivers more than he doesn't. What do you do right now with Johnny Smith? I mean, uh, hasn't top 40 yards Oof. since week three. Ferkser has more targets and receptions than Johnny since then. Oof, that's tough. I uh, Ferkser <laughs> is really upsetting. Because John, who had everything necessary to be a breakout fantasy tight end this year, which we needed, and then he's splitting the targets, and I don't see that going away. So I don't think you can rely on on John. Who. All right. Anything else from this matchup you guys want to chat about? No, and I, I, I'm not playing Corey Davis. He's he's a fine wide receiver three in certain matches, but this isn't the one where I'm taking the chance. Okay. Yeah, the matchup's uh, mighty tough. Let's get into the starts. Starts of the week. All right, all right, all right. It's time. It's week 11. Starts of the week. Obviously, mine will be great, but what do you guys have in store? Mike, why great don't you ones. kick us off? All right, I'll start at my quarterback. I kind of alluded to it, and it's it's wild that we are in a place where this guy needs to be named a start of the week. I am going with Lamar Jackson, who is at home versus the Tennessee Titans in the past three weeks. 
We have seen Joe Burrow. We've seen Phillip Rivers. P. River as a quarterback one in this matchup. We saw Nick Foles throw for 330 yards and two touchdowns against this defense. And I liked what I saw from Lamar last week. So he is, in fact, my start of the week at the quarterback position. I'm going with Deshaun Watson. Uh, he's got a tough matchup against New England if you look on paper, but he has been outstanding since Bill O'Brien left and they opened up that offense. He's been a top 10 quarterback every single week except this last week when the weather was outlandishly bad. He was still the quarterback 16. But if you look at the New England Patriots defense, they, they look so good. They're, they're giving up few fantasy points. It's just because they play super slow. They are the slowest team in the league, but thankfully, the Texans have a fast pace of play. On a per-play basis, our Kyle the Borgogan did some research here. The Patriots are a really bad defense. This is why they're playing so slow, is to hide their defense. They're last in yards per pass attempt, last in yards per play, second to last in pass success rate, last in defensive DVOA, uh, 30th in pass DVOA and 31st in rush DVOA on a per play basis. So if the pace of play is picked up by Houston, I think Deshaun Watson can have himself a game. Are you concerned that New England will be able to slow the game down though, moving the ball on Houston's defense? Uh, I I think that if they do, if they come down and score and have a long drive, Deshaun Watson's just going to air it out and uh, he's going to go. I would say he takes it up to 100 with Brandon Cooks. All right, I'm going to go deeper. This week, I am not going to be uh, pushed away from this uh, quarterback because of the injury concerns. I'm going to go with Matthew Stafford this week. Uh, I know you guys have a difference of opinion here. Matthew Stafford has been great, and he's done it without Kenny Galladay. The, out of the last three weeks, he had a number three overall finish. Last week against Washington, he had a number six overall finish. The only week in the last three that he struggled was the week where he was COVID uh, sequestered for the whole week and didn't get to come in and do any practicing. And he's taking on Carolina. Carolina has given up a top 12 defense or a top 12 performance four consecutive weeks. They are the worst dead last in football over the last five weeks in terms of fantasy points given up to the quarterback position. I think they're going to move the ball fine against Detroit. Uh, Teddy Bridgewater and company has done it all year long. We like Mike Davis and Matthew Savage is going to have to air it out again whether Galladay's back or not, I like Stafford this week, and I like what I've been seeing from that offense. So um, DeAndre Swift and company will help. Matthew Stafford, I'm going to take the go out on a limb with Matthew Stafford this week. And DeAndre Swift is my running back start of the week. Since week four, this guy has been a fantasy monster, and it's it feels like he hasn't because he hasn't been on the field, but the opportunities have been there. We're seeing uh, since that week four breakout, 15 opportunities a game. You saw the snap counts jump all the way up to over 70% this last week against Washington, which we had not seen him anywhere close to that throughout the entire season. And that was after the team named him the main guy, the main starter, and that turned into over 20 opportunities on that game and the matchup. It's the Panthers, man. They're allowing the fourth most points per game to running backs. Uh, I love Swift. I love him this week. My start of the week at running back is Kareem Hunt. You cannot be scared off of Chubb being back. He's been better per game with Chubb than without Chubb. The The Philadelphia Eagles defense is good, but it, it just doesn't matter. This is the heart and soul of the Cleveland Browns. He needs to be in everybody's lineup. Last week, he had 23 opportunities as the backup. Goodness. This is unbelievable. This team wants to run the ball. They will. And when Chubb is wearing down defenses and then you put Hunt in, it's it's unfair. I'm going to go with Damian Harris. Oh, dude, I, like I love it, it man. Yeah, I, I love it. It, it just – what Harris has done here has made me just so sad of what happened at the beginning of the year where he was crushing at training camp and then got hurt. Like he was – Harris was one of our favorite late-round picks and it just – well, just, got hurt. just so you know how good he's been, over the last three games, you pace that out over a season. That's 277 carries, 1,500 yards uh, on the ground. and He is who they wanted Sony Michel to be. Uh, no doubt. I mean, he's just so much more aggressive. Uh, he's stronger. He He's looked outstanding. Houston's defense, third worst against the run this year. They've given up top 12 numbers. Top 12 numbers to opposing fantasy running backs for four consecutive weeks. And Damian Harris, this offense, the identity of this offense, 
It's uh, the running game. So I'm going to go with Damian Harris this week, give you a confidence boost. And I'm doing a confidence boost here at the wide receiver position. I'm going with the a little bit banged up, but the matchup is great. It's Tyler Lockett. It's bizarre, again, for, for a player like Tyler Lockett to find himself in the starts of the week. But in the last six games, you have only been happy with Tyler Lockett one time. Ouch. And and that was against Arizona. And that That's when he was the number one guy. Ended up with that crazy huge game of 20 targets, 15 for 203 touchdowns. Patrick Peterson for the Arizona Cardinals has not been a shutdown corner. But in the couple matchups he has had with DK Metcalf, something about that matchup, Patrick Peterson can at least hang with him. I'm not... I'm not saying you sit down DK Metcalf, but uh, but I like Tyler Lockett because Patrick Peterson can actually do things to slow down DK Metcalf in the passing game. At wide receiver, I'm going with my guy from yesteryear, Juju Smith-Schuster. He's oh yeah. Uh, over the last month, he's been the number one wide receiver for the Steelers. He's scored more fantasy points than Deontay, more than Chase. He's had 42 targets in the last four games, and he is now finally back to the role that he succeeded in uh, when he had Antonio Brown, which is not the clear-cut number one option for opposing defenses to defend. If you got to be watching out for Deontay Johnson and Chase Claypool. Juju's been beating up on weaker opponents, and this is a weak opponent. I think Juju has a, has a great game this week. I'm going to go with Terry McLaurin as my wide receiver oh, start of the week. And he's hitting all my guys. Yeah, Terry McLaurin, <laughs> he's facing a Bengals defense that just gave up not one, not two, three top ten performances to three different Pittsburgh receivers last week. They're one of the worst against the pass. McLaurin leads the NFL in yards after the catch, percentage of teams air yards, and uh, like I said, no one's passed for more yards over the last two weeks than Alex Smith. He just finds a way. Terry McLaurin finds mm -hmm. a way to produce three straight top 20 weeks, so he's my start of the week. And at the tight end position. Oh, my. Oh, oh gosh. Oh, brother. Is there like a, Here we are. Can we get like a uh, – Brooks needs to like read a disclaimer before tight end starts of the week. <laughs> like in the event that you do not have Travis Kelsey, you are exposing yourself to tremendous risk each and every week. But go on, Mike. Yeah, I mean, like even the even Darren Waller last week, terrible. <laughs> Hawkinson, great matchup last week. Oh, but he was terrible. So here we are at the tight end position. The guy I like a little bit more than the other guys this uh, this week, it is Jared Cook going up against Atlanta, who's allowing the most points to the position. Jameis likes throwing to the tight end. Uh, I think that Michael Thomas and Jared Cook are will be the top targets for him. And he, chance to score. So, Jared Cook. All right. I'm going to go with, we, we talked about him earlier this episode, Dallas Goddard. He's been a little bit disappointing. Good air. Good air. He got back on the field and up to his full 93% snaps. He got six targets. That's a, I mean, for a tight end, that's what you're looking for. You're looking for, you know, north of five targets and a guy that's used downfield. You can't ask for much more than what's that in the, the Barfy tight end realm. What's the math translation between Ertz, or I'm sorry, Wentz targets and regular targets? Is there it's seventy five percent of a regular right. target? I was just trying to. <laughs> so hopefully he can get up a little bit higher so that it can translate into five plus real targets. But <laughs> Cleveland is not a super great matchup, uh, or it is they're not great against tight end. So I I think Dallas Goddard, you've been disappointed. He should, in theory, have a okay week. <laughs> Speaking of taking your shot, I'm gonna I'm gonna bring somebody to the surface I wouldn't have expected at this point in the year. But I just, I, I just got a feeling this week, Tyler Higby. We know tight end, hardest position to pick. No one's good except Kelsey. Tampa Bay's given up uh, points to the tight end position. I think there's opportunity here for Higby and Everett. Last week, I watched closely. Uh, I had Goff in a bunch of leagues. Took some deep shots to Higby. He actually snuck back into the top 12 at the position last week. And we've seen, I, I think I brought it up earlier in the week, McVay has, has transitioned his offense over the course of the year. It's a dart throw, but Tampa's struggling against the tight end position, and I think you could do a lot worse than Tyler Higby. So I'm looking for a touchdown from him this week and a big play, but hey, man, it's the tight end position. <laughs> it's the tight end. All right, Jason, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and prepare myself. Jason Moore's Ironclad, Locked and Loaded, 100% guaranteed boom, boom, kicker of the week. I know people think with the boom boom, oh, Jason, he panders. 
but I worked tirelessly to find the Dolphins' Jason T. Sanders. That's one of my favorites. I, I rhymed even his middle initial, which is, in fact, T for Thomas. Uh, I, I thought that was just to get the kind of um, uh, syllables right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Oh, look, I I, I know. appreciated that. Uh, what did the iamic pentameter? Is that <laughs> That's what, what I'm is? saying. Yes. That was very, very nice, Jason. <sighs> I'm finally understanding poetry. Well done. All right, we want to thank Pristine Auction today. Ronald Jones signed Buccaneers speed mini helmet yesterday. Fifty five. Fifty five bucks if you want to commemorate a 98 yard touchdown run. You can check out hundreds of daily auctions. PristineAuction.com. Use code Ballers. You get a ten dollar credit. More matchups tomorrow, Brooks. Are you prepared? Are you ready? Oh, yeah. See? He's ready. We'll see you in the morning. Thanks for tuning in, and check out jointhefoot.com for the bonus episode every week. See you tomorrow. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com. And follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers.